Hey everyone, my name is Jeremy McPeak for NetTuts. Today we are going to look at views in the ASP.NET MVC framework. Uh, if you're just now joining us, be sure to check out some of the previous lessons. We look at the framework in general, but we also look at the routing engine controllers, and we also did a little bit of model validation as well. So this might not be the best place to start if you're new to the MVC framework. Uh, the previous lessons would be a much better place to start. Now, over the course of those lessons, we did look a little bit at views, but we didn't spend a whole lot of time. In fact, we actually did things a little bit wrong. Uh, just because we were looking at other components, we wanted to focus on those. So this time we're going to spend some time with views, and we are going to look at the default view engine, which is called the Web Forms View Engine. Now remember that in MVC, a lot of the components are interchangeable. If we don't like the default implementation, implementation of uh, a controller or the routing engine or views or anything like that, we can just swap it out with something else. Now the default is called a web form view engine. And that really changes with MVC version 3. Uh, Microsoft is developing a new view engine called Razor. And whenever that is out of beta, which will hopefully be uh, within uh, January or February of 2011, we will look at the Razor syntax and compare it to the Web Forms view engine. Because we're primarily dealing with views in this lesson, I didn't want to spend a whole lot of on-screen time writing code, getting to the point to where we can finally talk about views. That just seems like a waste of time. So I wrote code beforehand. It's a skeleton, really. It has everything except views. So we can add in the views. But first, let's go over that code just so that we know what's going on. Uh, this particular website is going to display products and each product is represented by this product class. It has a name, an ID, and a product type. Product type is an enumeration, and this probably isn't the best way to do this because product types come and go and they would be contained within a database. Uh, we could create an enumeration from data with a database, but that gets complicated and uh, uh, the benefit is negligible. So we probably wouldn't want to do it this way, but uh, for the sake of simplicity, for this example, we are going to use an enumeration. And let's look at that enumeration. We have three different product types. We have electronics, musical instruments, and books. Of course, we could add more things here, but again, we're keeping this simple, so we're just going to keep these three. Uh, we have a repository called All Products, and what a repository is, is it represents a collection of a type of information, in this case, products. So since this is a product repository, then it's going to uh, deal with products and products only. Uh, it has a private list of products. This is going to serve as our data store. Instead of using a real database, we're just going to emulate one. And we populate that list with a few products here. We have uh, some very generic things, but we also have some uh, real books here. This Build Your Own Wicked WordPress Themes is Jeffrey Way's book, and JavaScript 24-Hour Trainer is one of mine. So if those interest you, be sure to pick them up. We will be very thankful. Um, so that is our data store. And in order to get information from our data store, we have some methods. We have one that uh, we can filter the products by type. So if we wanted uh, all of the books, then we can specify books, and we would get all the products that are of type book. So we use this method here that are of type in order to filter it down. We also have another method called that has ID. Um, this is so that we can get an individual product with a particular ID. We are using single or default, so if one does not exist within our data store, then that is going to return null. And that's really the only special things here. Uh, the repository does implement ienumerable. This is so that we can actually use an instance of this repository as a collection. Uh, well, not really a, connect, a collection, but as an enumerable object. And uh, that way, 
if we want to list all of the products, we can do that without having to write any other type of methods. So these get enumerator methods are there just so that we can satisfy the implementation needs of the ienumerable interface. So those are our data classes. So let's look at our uh, routing table. And we have three routes, and remember we want to go from the most specific at the top to the most generic at the bottom. So let's actually look at these in reverse order. Our default route is going to display all of the products within our uh, data store. So index is going to display all six products. The next route is going to call a method called list products of type. It's going to have a parameter that is going to have a string value of the type of product that we want to view. So it's going to have uh, electronics, musical instruments, or books. And uh, this value will be passed to this method. And then we can filter our products based upon that value that is passed. And then our third route is going to display individual products. It has a parameter of ID, and we have specified a constraint. ID can only be a number. So this is how the routing engine is going to distinguish requests with one parameter between these um, two uh, routes here. Uh, this route is going to call a method called individual product and it's going to pass an integer to that. So let's go ahead and look at our controller. We just have one and it is called home controller. Uh, our index method once again is going to display all of the products. So we have created an instance of our repository, assigned it to all products, and passed it to the view. So this is where the ienumerable interface is going to come into play. And uh, the next method, individual product, this is going to display one product for us by the ID here. So we are creating a new instance of our repository and we are using that has ID in order to get a particular product. And then the final method is list products of type. Uh, we are doing some magic here to convert the string value of product type into a value of the enumeration. Now this would not work if any other string was passed other than electronics, musical instruments, or books. Uh, but we could write some code to handle that, but we're not going to worry with that because uh, we just want to keep things simple. So after we get the product type, then we create a new instance of our repository. We use the that are of type method and uh, get those products and pass it to the view. So that's all of the code I wrote in preparation for this lesson. I have not tested it, but I have no reason to think that it won't work, so let's press F5 and run it. Uh, we should get an error. That's not the error that I was hoping for. And that was the error I was hoping for. This is good, because this is telling us that uh, this request is being routed to the index action method on our home controller. And what this error is telling us is that it is trying to find a view of index.aspx or index.ascx. And it's looking within a home folder and a shared folder. The home folder is there because uh, this is the home controller, so all of the views uh, for the home controller need to be within the home folder. If it's not, then it looks within the shared, which is used by all of the controllers. Um, since it cannot find this view, then we get this error message here. Uh, this ASCX, now whenever we talked about master pages and things like that many, many, many months ago, before we started looking at MVC, we didn't get into user controls. That's what an ASCX file is. Really all it is is a class. It's a class that inherits from user control, but we can reuse it within the same file or throughout multiple files. So it's a reusable piece of code that uh, a lot of times we'll just have markup that we want to use over and over and over again. Uh, in MVC talk, this is a partial view. 
and we're not going to worry with partial views just yet, but we will here in a little bit. Uh, let's test our other routes. Uh, let's try books, and we should get another error of list products of type. That's great, and let's type in a number and individual product. So our routing table is set up correctly. It's working fine. We just need to create the views for uh, these action methods. But before we do that, let's look within our views folder here. We have a shared folder that has a file called site.master. This is a master page. This is almost exactly like the master pages that we looked at uh, all those lessons ago. Um, the only difference is we don't use controls. We use HTML helpers, which we can see here, HTML.renderPartial. This is actually rendering a partial uh, view, and uh, we don't have that partial view, so let's delete that. So this was the default. It's not default anymore. Uh, but this is you know, a master page. So what we are going to do, whenever we create a view, we are going to use this master page. So it's going to have um, all of this markup here, but whenever we create a view, we are just going to uh, create the content that's going to be placed within this main content, but we will see everything else here. So let's create a view. Doing that is really easy. All we have to do is right click within any of these methods, which I will do index, add view, and uh, we are prompted to create a view. Uh, here we have index because I right clicked within index. We can create a partial view. We will later. We will not do that right now though. Uh, and then we can choose if we want to create a strongly typed view. Now notice that we are passing data to uh, this view here. So we do need strongly typed view. So we will check that. And then the view data class. We can choose uh, different types of data. Uh, since all products is its own class and it is enumerable, we are just going to use all products, but we could also choose product and then list. And then this would create a view that expects an I enumerable list of products, which would work as well because that's what our repository is. But we are just going to do all products and um, we'll still do list. We'll have to modify our view, but uh, we will do that. We want to use the master page that we have defined here, and the content is going to be placed within the main content. So we will just click Add. Now notice we don't have a home folder over here. This will create one for us, and it put index.aspx in it. Now before we use this view, we need to make one little change. Whenever we created it, we uh, specified list here. And what this does is this actually uh, creates a view that expects data like this. And I misspelled enumerable, but who cares? Uh, it, unfortunately, it's not smart enough to know that we are passing something that is already enumerable. So it wraps it around um, another I enumerable. So whenever we want to use this view, we have to take out this I enumerable here. And that's easy enough to do. So this inherits is really what's going to tell the view what type of data is being passed to it. Because if we look at our controller, we are passing an instance of our all products repository. So that's what this view is expecting. If we put something different here, in fact, uh, let's put back the I enumerable. We are going to get an error because what we are passing the view and what the view is expecting is uh, two different things. So it's going to say, I don't know what to do. Uh, come on, give me the error. There we go. So see, it's... Uh, it says that the item passed was all products, but it requires an I enumerable of all products. 
So if we take out this here, save it and go back and refresh, then uh, we are going to see um, not a whole lot here. We're not seeing the actual information from the product, but we can make that change. So whatever we specify here within this, within this inherits attribute is actually going to be used within this model uh, name here. So this is the instance of all products that we passed here. So model is all products and we are looping through our model and uh, right now we're not displaying anything of use. So let's change that. And we want to just display the name. Uh, this is a table and since we chose list it is creating a table and listing everything within our model for us. So we have a table and it is generating a row for each item within our model. Uh, there's also this link at the bottom that we really don't need because we cannot create new items. So if we go back and refresh we are going to see our products here. Now notice that I am making changes while we are in debugging mode. That's because this is a view. We can make changes to our view whenever we want. Unfortunately we cannot make changes to pure C sharp files whenever we are in debugging mode and that's just because this code is compiled and uh, we cannot change it. But we can change the views. Instead of just showing the name, let's use a link here so that whenever we would click on any of these uh, items, it would take us to the page for that particular product. So to do that, we will use a method of the HTML helper class, so HTML dot, and there is a method called route link. And what this method does is it generates a URL based upon the routes that we have named in our routing table. So a default list products of type, individual products, these are all names that we can specify and create uh, a URL from. So for this particular case, we want to create a URL for this route here, individual product. And all we have to do is specify the ID and then the framework will generate a URL for us. Now, we could do this really easily on our own, but uh, for more complex URLs, let's say we were writing a blog or something where we would have uh, a year month day and then perhaps a unique ID, uh, that's where uh, this particular method would come in handy so that we could just supply the values and it would generate that link for us. So the first thing we need to provide this is the text of the link. This is what's going to be displayed to the user and that is just going to be the name of the product. And I think we want the sixth overload, uh, route name and route values, yes. So now we want to specify the route that we want to use, which is individual product. And then we want, need to specify the values for the parameters of that particular route. All we need to do is specify ID, and we need to do that within an object. So I am going to create an anonymous object and uh, give it a property of ID, assign it a value of item.id, and that should work. Now, remember that item is just one particular item within our model. So for every item or for every product within our model, which is the all products, it's going to generate uh, a link for that product. So let's go back and let's refresh the page. And we should see links here. And if we view the source, we can see that it did generate generate links here. And the path for these links are slash two, slash three, slash four, five, and six. So these are valid links. If we were to click one, it's not going to work because we don't have a view for the individual product yet. So let's go ahead and create that. And we can do that while we are still in debugging mode. So let's go to our home controller, right click within individual product, add view. We do want product here. That is what we are passing to this view. So we will leave that as product. And let's choose details. Now, 
these things here are just templates. Uh, the details is going to use reflection and get the properties of the product class and, and automatically display them for us so that we don't have to do a lot. We could just choose em empty and go from there. It really doesn't matter. This is just uh, a nice way to get started with uh, a particular type of view. So let's click add and that will create our view force. There it is within the home folder. And we can see that it inherits uh, system.web.mvc.viewpage, but it's essentially a product. So the model here is a an instance of product, or actually it's not an instance of product, but you get the idea. Model here is product, whereas under uh, index.aspx model is going to be all products and that's just because of what we pass to the view and what's specified within it within the inherits attribute uh, let's see we have name and ID but we don't have product type so let's go ahead and add that I wonder why that didn't add and let's do product type and then we just need to do type here. And there's something down here. We don't need these links. So now if we refresh the page, then this should show us our details page. And there it is. Although it's not very uh, friendly. So let's make... Um, it's a little bit easier to read. We'll do name colon, then put the name out beside it. We'll do the same thing for the ID and the product type. And we don't need that, that, or that. So let's refresh, and this should be a little bit easier to read. And that is much better. So if we go to Piano, we are going to get the details of that particular product. So this is working very well. The only view that we don't have right now is for the list products of type. And we will go ahead and create that now. Once again, we want to create a strongly typed view. And uh, our view data class is going to be a product but it's going to be enumerable so we'll go ahead and use the list template to generate that for us and everything else is okay so let's click add and uh, it did something a little bit different from the looks of it we actually have the name and ID so we are going to need to edit this some because really what we want to do is make this um, list here our index and our uh, uh, list of type pages look the same so we need to do some editing here and uh, let's go ahead and first make our list of products the same I know we don't have any headers here so let's get rid of the headers and we don't need that column. Really, the only column we need is item name. We don't need the create new. OK, so this should make these two lists look identical. So let's refresh. And that's close enough. But let's also say that we want to add in the type of product that this is so that if we are looking at this list, we can see that a computer is electronics, the same as Blu-ray player, the guitars, musical instru instruments, and so on and, and so forth. So that uh, we can see that and we can also make those links so that we can click the link and then see all of the products of that particular type. So let's go back to index. We'll make that change first. We have um, one column for uh, for the name, so let's create another column for the um, for the type, and we can pretty much just copy this. And instead of using item name, we want to use the type. And instead of individual product, we want to use 
the um, route for the list products of type. So we will do that. We'll go back, specify that route name, and then we also need to change the parameters here. So uh, this has to be just right. So we will copy and paste and change this to type. And why is that red squiggly there? Represents it. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, and hello. It looks like I'm experiencing some technical difficulties. Uh, I will be back whenever this has been resolved. And we are back. I am sorry about that. Um, such as the trials and tribulations of running it within a virtual machine while recording said virtual machine. I do have some new hardware components coming in and uh, hopefully that will resolve those types of issues. So uh, we were generating a link for these and that red squiggly line is because we need a two string there. And uh, let's Look, that should be fine. So let's refresh this page and we should get electronics, which is great. If we look down there in the bottom left, we can see that our um, uh, URL looks good. So if I click on musical instruments, we get guitar and piano. That's wonderful. And electronics, we get computer and Blu-ray. Great. So now we just need to make the same change to um, our view for list products of type. And that's easy enough to do. We also need to copy that link so that we can view the actual item. And whenever we view those pages, there we have a, we have a link for the details of the product as well as a link for the product type. Now we basically just replicated work, and uh, anytime you are replicating work, alarm bells should be going off. Why am I replicating something? Why can't I reuse something? Well, remember whenever I was talking about the ASCX files, how they were user controls in web forms and how you can reuse them over and over again? Well, they're not called user controls in MVC, but you can still use them over and over again. In MVC, they're called partial views. And instead of using a uh, master page or anything like that. It's just a small little snippet of code that we can reuse over and over and over again. And we don't have to worry about uh, replicating any code. So we can create a new view, which we are going to do by right clicking over here on home, choosing add and then view. And then we want to create a partial view. And we can see immediately that these things are grayed out here. So we are no longer going to use a master page or anything like that. This is going to be a partial view. And we want to call this um, list item. Uh, let's do product list item that way. It's very specific product list item and we can still have a uh, strongly typed partial view and we want to just do individual products here because that's what we are doing within this loop here. So uh, let's go ahead and click add and I'm not going to do anything here. Uh, we are just going to leave it as empty click add and then we have a partial view and it is completely empty. We can start adding in markup or code here and we can use it then later on. So let's copy this whole table row here and let's paste it into our partial view. And of course that looks a little ugly so let's format document there. That's nice and pretty. And since we don't have anything within this for each loop here, what we want to use is another method of the HTML helper and that is uh, render partial 
and we specify the name of the partial view, partial view that we want to use, and that is product list item. And then we need to pass it a model. Well, it's expecting a product object, so we are just going to pass item. Oops. And we would do the same thing in, okay, why are you? Ah, that's because I need to take that off. We are not returning anything, we are just rendering something. Okay, so now we can copy this and paste it into index. We'll get rid of the same little bit of code, but it's doing the same thing. We are passing, or we are rendering a partial view, the product list item, and we are passing an item object to it. Uh, we need to go back here, not there a semicolon there and why was this red here oh um, we do need to change some of this code instead of item we now use model and any place that we have used item we will use model now and those red squigglies go away so if we were to refresh this page this is the index then hi this is index. I thought I put... Oh, I didn't save it. That's a problem. So we will refresh and we get the same exact list that we had before. And if we click on one of these links for the category, then we are going to get the same thing. And these are pulling from the partial view. Uh, so that whenever we want to change this list in any way, all we have to do is go to our partial view and let's say we wanted to add another um, column here and we'll just put in the ID of course by doing this we've kind of made our details page um, useless because we'll have all of that information but we can just do it like this just so that we can see that these changes are being made to both the product type page see there we get the ID and also the index so with partial views we can reuse the same little snippets of code over and over again whenever we want to so that is essentially views so to sum things up, we use views to display information to the user, and we usually get that information from a data store. We pass that information to the view uh, via objects, and that is our model object, and we use the model object inside of the view to access the data that we passed to that view. And in case if we want to display the same types of information in multiple places throughout our application, we can use what are called partial views. And we can use the render partial method to display those uh, partial views. And these are also strongly typed if we want them to be. We can pass them their own model data and then use that data within the partial view. Whenever we look at Razor, we are going to do one or two things. We are going to replicate this project, but use MVC3 and the Razor view, uh, the Razor view engine, I'm sorry. Or we are going to write a blog. Well, we are going to write a blog anyway, but uh, I want to at least show the differences between the WebForms view engine, which is what we view today, and contrast that with Razor. So we are either going to do that with our blog project, which will be within the next couple of lessons, or this particular project. So uh, that wraps things up for this lesson. I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Once again, my name is Jeremy McPeak, and I will see you next time.